The biggest issue other religions have with Christianity is the concept of the Trinity, which is the triune Godhead equating God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit as all one sovereign God in three distinct persons. Cultic religions like Islam, Mormonism, and Jehovah's Witnesses were even created after the Christian faith with the primary goal in defying this exact idea. The objections for the Trinity are usually as follows, that the word Trinity cannot be found in the Bible, that God cannot become a human, and that somehow the Council of Nicaea added Trinitarian doctrine to scripture. However, all of these objections are false and straight from the pits of hell. And today we are going to cover this in detail. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. When we take a look at scripture plus early church history, we can see that Trinitarian doctrine exists existed from the very beginning of time. Even before Jesus Christ manifested himself in the flesh, the evidence for the Trinity can be found in the very first chapter of the Bible, where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all convened together to create humanity. As Genesis 1.26 states, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now some like to argue that the us in this context context was God talking to his angelic counsel, but this is also not true because Nehemiah 9.6 says the Lord alone made heaven as well as the earth and all that is on it. So we can see here in this verse as well as other verses in the Bible that nowhere did the prophets ever believe that an angelic counsel was partially responsible for the creation of humanity. It was God alone. Therefore, God using the term us is a clear example of the Trinitarian Godhead. We also see that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are equally responsible for creation alongside Yahweh because in Colossians, 116, this verse is referring to Jesus' divinity by stating all things were created through him and for him. The Holy Spirit also receives the same recognition for creation because in Psalm 104, 29 to 30, King David says, when God sends forth his spirit, all creatures are created. We also see another reference where the heavenly father calls his son, Jesus Christ, God. In Hebrews 1, 8 to 9, it says, But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. We clearly see here in the scriptures that God the Father calls Christ the Son, God, which is a prime example that both the Father and the Son are equally responsible for creation. Due to the Trinitarian belief that Christianity holds, Christians are often accused of of polytheism with the claim that they worship three different gods. But this is a false notion for man's inability to understand this concept. The Bible makes it very clear that there is only one God in multiple different verses. The Holy Trinity is not a foreign concept to debunk the monotheistic belief in God, but in fact it supports monotheism. It just adds the spiritual component of the depths of the divine nature of who God really is. The Trinity is hard to conceptualize for mankind because man did not create Christianity, it was created by God himself. Every other religion religion presents God in a way that can be visualized by humans because it came from humans and not from the divine. However, the Trinitarian doctrine of Christianity does not limit itself to our confined understanding of physical laws and dimensions. Our capacity to visualize the codes of God's universe are limited because we are men and he is God. And this is why the concept of the Trinity can be hard to grasp for a man walking in natural understanding. Now, like I mentioned earlier, people claim that Trinitarian doctrine did not exist until the Catholic Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. However, this is also a straight up lie because many of the early Christians wrote doctrines about the Trinity before the Council of Nicaea was even formed. Polycarp, a bishop born in 70 AD, also known as the disciple of John the Apostle, said this, O Lord God Almighty, I bless you and glorify you through the eternal and heavenly high priest Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, through whom be glory to you, with him and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Tertullian, an African apologist and Christian theologian born in 160 AD, also affirmed Trinitarianism by stating this, We define that there are two, the Father and the Son, and three with the Holy Spirit, and this number is made by the pattern of salvation, which brings about unity and Trinity, interrelating the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three, not in dignity, but in degree. 
three. Not in substance, but in form. Not in power, but in kind. They are of one substance and power because there is one God from whom these degrees, forms, and kinds devolve in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Another famous theologian named Origen, born in 185 AD, also wrote about the doctrine of the Trinity in his work by stating this. If anyone would say that the word of God or the wisdom of God had a beginning, let him beware lest he direct his impiety rather against the unbegotten Father, since he denies that he was always Father and that he has always begotten the word, and that he always had wisdom in all previous times or ages or whatever can be imagined in priority. There can be no more ancient title of Almighty God than that of Father, and it is through the Son that he is the Father. For if the Holy Spirit were not eternally as he is and had received knowledge at some time and then became the Holy Spirit, this were the case, the Holy Spirit would never be reckoned in the unity of the Trinity, i.e., along with the unchangeable Father and his Son, unless he had always been the Holy Spirit. Moreover, nothing in the Trinity can be called greater or less, since the fountain of divinity alone contains all things by his word and reason, and by the Spirit of his mouth sanctifies all things which are worthy of sanctification. Not only is the Trinity supported biblically by stating that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all had equal responsibility for creation, but it was also widely believed by Christians before the Council of Nicaea was even formed. The question you have to ask yourself is this. If the Trinity was supposedly false doctrine, why would counter-religions be formed to combat this which is a supposed lie, especially when the fruit of these counter-religions are demonic to its core? Anything the devil opposes will always have truth to it, because he is the father of all lies and can only operate powerfully off of falsehood. The Trinity is in fact biblical doctrine, it is not a pagan concept, and it was not added to the Bible at any time. And yes, you can't find the word Trinity anywhere in the Bible, but you can clearly see examples of it all throughout scripture. And guess what? You also can't find H2O anywhere in the Bible. Does that mean you're going to stop drinking water? I mean, <laughs> come on, dude. The triune Godhead existed way before creation even occurred. And even Jesus says so himself, where he states, And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I'll be completely transparent. In the beginning, I had a hard time conceptualizing Trinitarianism. But as I studied the scriptures and prayed for wisdom, God made his mysteries clear to me with revelation straight from the throne room of heaven. The Trinity is real and it needs to be defended because there are a lot of heresies creeping into the church, which ultimately causes confusion and leads to a great falling away. However, if you're walking in the spirit, the things of the spirit will become plain to you with no confusion whatsoever. If you guys made it all the way till the end of the video, I want you to comment down below. The Trinity is real. If you guys want to financially sow into the ministry, I have an offering link that's in the description or I have merch you can buy, which is also linked in the description. If you guys want to watch my last video, simply click up here. And if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, simply click up here. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, take care and peace out.